We will rather die in IDP's camps with our children than surrender our land to headsmen. They are women who have seen it all in life. They are within the age bracket of 73 and 90 years. An encounter with this group of women who have spent the last three years in internally displaced persons, IDPs, camps that thought the landscape of Benue State was quite revealing. Without doubt, their facial expression clearly gave out the weight of the pains and the very prolonged unpleasant experiences they bear in these camps, which evokes emotion. And from their snelling remark, the deep-rooted grooves they hold against the federal government over their continual stay in the camps, the accompanying ordeals came to the fore. Most of these women are the Tiseyande and Abagena IDP camp would have long gone to the great beyond, but for the support they get from non-governmental organizations, NGOs, religious organizations, public spirit individuals, and the Benue state government, for instance. In their separate count of life in the IDP's camp, they explained why they cannot return to their ancestral home with their children and grandchildren. After three years, the women who decried the living condition in the camp attributed their long stay away from home to the insincerity of the federal government in the handling of the headsmen crisis in Benue State. The women rightly or wrongly believed that federal government abandoned the Benue IDPs to their fate because of reason they cannot tell. They wonder why the federal government has not been concerned about their plight over the past three years. Why at the same time send the money and palliative to other states affected by the headers crisis. Indeed, they are suspicious that the federal government might have refused to fulfill its promise of rebuilding their destroyed homes in order to leave their ancestral land desolated, to allow headsmen occupy such communities unhindered. If not to allow headsmen who destroyed our homes and chased us away from our ancestral land to occupy our communities. Why? Thank you for listening to this news. Um, you see, my viewers, though one can be sympathetic to these people, and at the same time, one can still not be sympathetic to them, you'll be wondering, why am I speaking this way? Yes, I have to, because they are the one that invited what is chasing them. They are the cause of what is uh, affecting them today. If only they have maintained the government that has been favoring them, that has been helping them, that has built schools for, them, for their children to attend, that has been in one way or the other providing for them, this wouldn't have happened to them. Instead, they said it is that man, that man that, uh, uh, that, 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 that came from the same village with them, that man whose father is their relative, that they want to be the president of this country. They said he is from our state. He is a northerner, a Fulani man. Let us vote for him. He's going to do good to us. They voted him. Now he has entered. He's now dealing with them. They are crying. Hmm.
is too late. Too, too late. Too damn too late. This is what they cost for themselves. And nobody cost it for them. Their tears, I will tell you though, is touching. But they cost it for themselves. Look at what they are going through. Look at. Look at. They don't even have a home anymore. They don't have a home. They're just moving from one place to the other for shelter. And the one that called himself their president is seeing all this that is happening to these people. Forgotten that these are the people that elected him, that helped him to rig the election to see that he gets into power. Forgetting that these are the people that fought and said, if it is not Bwari, it could be no other person. See how they have been abandoned. What a touching story. My dear viewers, this is what we call the wickedness of the leaders. This is why we will say that it is not okay. To, to to believe a, a politician. A politician will present manifestos to you containing many lies and you as a person will get hold of the manifestos believing that what he has written in that manifestos is the truth. This is why I was saying what I said during the Edo gubernatorial election when uh, Ize Iyamo was reading out his manifestos to the people of Edo State. I said, as far as I am concerned, that manifesto is empty. Yes, for that period, it is empty. If of Obaseki too, it's empty. Not until they, until they come into power and start doing those things they wrote in the manifestos example another example is president momo Bari. of course we all know all that he wrote in his manifestos i remember the manifestos written by uh oveji ogboru the man that contested under the platform of labor party in delta state as a governor that was defeated by okonwa I know what he wrote in his manifestos. I know what uh, 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 Somolu, the present governor of Lagos State, I know what he wrote in his manifestos. All these people, they just wrote every dick and airy lies. Lies lined up in the manifestos. Lies. They wrote them in lines. As we speak today, none of those things in that manifestos has been manifesting or has been put to play. You understand? So the moment they get into power, they will tear that manifestos and throw it to the, to the beam. You see that? So that is why we don't need to believe them. My viewers... I would like to hear from you. Let me know what you could have to say. Please, deem it free to leave those comments of yours below the comment section. Click on the subscription buttons as well as the bell buttons to get updated whenever we upload any new videos. Thank you.